Before I get to the main video, there are a few important things I need to go over. One, it's fucking hot. It is currently 107 degrees outside. And it's humid as fuck. We have like 30% humidity, which some places, not so bad. But when you're used to very dry heat, humidity is fucking awful. That's the first thing. The second to first thing is I'm currently unemployed. I know. Hold your applause. I'm proud of me too. Um, so I didn't quit or anything like that. The place I was working is no longer in business. They also owe me about a thousand dollars. So there you go. We have that. Uh, it sucks. I spent this morning pay, uh, cleaning a house for some extra money. Um, I do have a job interview lined up. Ooh, my hair. To become a teaching assistant in uh, the one local schools, but taking that job means I still won't be working for the rest of the month. So, there we go. We've got that. Now, I did something very stupid. Something you probably shouldn't do when you currently become unemployed. But I found 60 bucks in my wallet that I didn't know was there. It had probably been there for a very long time because it was behind my uh, Medi-Cal, my med e because I'm Californian, my uh, government insurance card, and I haven't had uh, government insurance for three-ish years, so it's been there for a while. So I went out and I went to... Um, two bookstores, and then Walmart, and then the Dollar Tree. So, we're going to go through my, what books I have recently purchased. And when I say recently, I mean in the past three days. So first, we're going to start off with, um, Time of Death by Susan Whitting Albert. Um, it is a murder mystery about a girl, a woman whose friend dies from an apparent suicide, but she kind of finds it kind of fishy, and she starts looking into that. And I have never found a murder mystery that I really, really like. I One of my favorite shows of all time, though, is Murder, She Wrote, and I want to find a murder mystery that, like, fills that in my life. Um, the next book we have is... See, I don't know how to say the name. Um, I think it's the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. Um, not going to read it. When I was at the... There's a local bookstore that I frequent quite a bit. I'm friends with the um, owner. She told me this was a murder mystery because I was looking for a cozy murder mystery. And it's not... And it's actually, actually one of the things I really have hard trouble reading was it's uh, apostolary, so it's told out through letters, and nope, pass, pass on that. And finally, from my Raven's Bookstore place, um, it's A Tale of Despero. I have a nephew, and I keep on trying to get him to read, well not read, but sit down and listen to stories, he's almost four, and I've never read it, and... The movie was not good, so I'm hoping the book's better. But it's short, and we should be able to get it pretty fast. Now, we're going to move on to my Barnes & Noble. Now, when I went to Barnes & Noble, they had they were having a sale. Um, trade paperbacks, two for $8, and um, hardbacks, two for 10 So I bought two and two. So the first paperback I got was The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie. I've never read this before. And I've really... If it wasn't on sale, I wouldn't have got it. I am not a grim, dark person. Um, but I've heard it so good, so I want to give it a try. And It only cost me basically $4, so I can do that. The next one I'm hoping is interesting, too. And that is Battle Mage by Stephen Aaron. Um, not really sure what it's about, but... The guy's, like, there's an elementalist, and 
Magic and Mayhem collide in the explosive epic fantasy from major new talent. Let's hope so. But I liked the quote on the back. It was just one of the characters. I can command storm, summon fire, and unmake stone. It's dangerous to meddle with things you don't understand. So I'm hoping that's good. Next. Next we'll get into the hardbacks, which is um, Magnus Chase and the guard, the gods of Asgard. Now, when this, when the first book of the series came out, that was actually the last Rick Riordan book I bought, because they were just uh, getting very, not necessarily predictable, but it's the same, you know? They don't, every book basically felt the same. It's just kind of too much. But it was on sale, and they are fun, you know? They're just not the most in-depth thing. So I'm going to give it a try. Maybe it will relight a fire in me to finish him, to finish the series or whatever. We'll see. I just bought it because it was on sale. I'm not going to lie. This one, though, I'm very excited about. And this is um, The Book of Cthulhu, edited by Rossi Lockhart. And it's a bunch of stories about the, you know, Lovecraft universe. The Cthulhu mythos. And I've never been into horror. Um, like, traditional, like, I don't really like traditional, but like, the, I don't know, this kind of horror. But, I want to try. I want to put myself out there. Um, the next, we're going to go into the books that I got from... The Dollar Tree. So what that means is none of these are the first book in the series because they never do that for some reason. It's always like the second, third, or sixth book. I guess they start going downhill or something. But um, it's the first one is Hollow Point um, by Ari Marmel, and it's like a it's a sleuthing case, um, a mystery. So the 1930s. Where the I think the private in private eye, Mick Oberon is uh, he's either a fairy or an elf, and he has a magic wand. I'm not really sure how they break this one apart, because it does talk about the Sealy and the Unsealy courts, but I don't know like how they go down that because I've seen it done different ways. Then we have, and that's the second book in the series. Next, we have um. The Fairy Swarm, the imaginary veterinary um, book six. And it's another one I brought for my nephew. It had pictures in it. And so that might help him like it. It's the sixth book in the series. So maybe I'll fall in love with it and then go by the first five. Hopefully this is not like the last book in the series. That'd be kind of sad. Um, but it has Bigfoot on it. And so... I like Bigfoot. Wish he was real. Next is one that looks really actually. I let love the I love the cover on this one, The Curse of the Chocolate Phoenix, by Kate Saunders, and I I love this cover. It is so nice. I really like when they do the covers and they don't have like a paper jacket on them. It's so nice. It just looks so pretty. I love the painting. It's just so pretty. Um, it's the second, it's not really, I don't know if it's the second book in the series, but it says it's a companion novel to, um, a companion to the Whiz Pop Chocolate Shop book. So hopefully that one is also good. We're getting down to the final two. Um, this is Tower Lord by Anthony Ryan. Now, I thought I had the first book in this series. But I think I either let somebody borrow it, or I gave it away or something. But it's called Blood Song. And I think I never finished it. But I think, I'm pretty sure um, I had it in hardback, and this was a dollar. Because I got these last three books at the uh, Dollar Tree. And I can't pass on a good deal like that. So I'm going to look around again. Maybe I put it in storage or something. Um, so I can finish reading it. And then that. 
Now, this is the book that I already started reading, because I've heard so many good things about it. Um, the Children of Blood and Bone by Tommy Adaimi. I don't know. I don't really want to say it to offend somebody. Um, but as someone who is currently writing a book based on mostly African mythology, I really love seeing this. I am a huge mystery nerd. It is one of the things I love the most. I adore mysteries. I am not like I'm not like a big fan of the Greek mythology anymore. But well, mostly because it's overplayed. It's very interesting, but you see so much of it. It's kind of like Norse mythology. N Norse mythology is so interesting, but when it's everywhere and it ceases to feel as special as other stuff, like. It does. It becomes less inspiring for me, as if that makes sense. Um, it's very hot. I have my fan, but and I don't want my cooler or my big fan on because it's so noisy. And you guys already have to deal with my um, electric cooling system in my PC, which is loud. I need to set this up some way so that's not as noisy. Um, but. I love tribal, like, African mythologies. They're really fun. I really want to see what she did with it. Um, and that's the main reason I bought it. I should go over one of the books I like um, sometime. It's called um, The Jaguar's Daughter. It's an old African fantasy. Because um, there's just not that many of them. There's, things are starting to change now, though. You're getting more, like, Wild West fantasies. Um, Hopefully we see a lot more like Mesoamerican fantasy coming up. That would be really cool. That stuff's really interesting. Um, but that's going to be it. This video is already 12 minutes. And hopefully I'll be um, posting more again. I know I haven't for the past like few weeks. Things have been going weird um, with my job and everything. And I've been kind of super depressed because the work, our production was still the same. But we were selling so much less, and it eventually couldn't handle it anymore. Um, but things will turn around. I'll be good. Um, until next time, I will see you guys later. Bye!